Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Untitled Reviews. This being a show, it's about dramas that I watch. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the latest episode of Ordinary Joe. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. Well, first and foremost, let's start off in the detective reality. We're dealing with the aftermath of Bobby's arrest, but the problem is it caused massive ripple effects to the point Amy's getting raided by the FBI because they're trying to find out, like, oh, like, Either that was a byproduct of like, oh, like you were working under Bobby, so we're checking to see if you're legit, or because Bobby called in some, like, he ran his mouth off about certain things, that's why Frank is in the situation he's in, because it's like, yeah, this is how Bobby operates. So both Amy and Joe are getting retaliated against to the point on his desk they're carving out traitor. Because it turns out, like, their captain or whatever is best buds with Bobby. So, like, of course, it would be a trickle-down effect. But for Joe, it's like, he's even talking to his ther therapist about it. Like, why am I being punished for doing the right thing? Like, my uncle, all he ever told me was instilled in me to do the right thing. And now he's boxed me out because he's like, yeah, you've ruined me and everything. Like, that's why me and your aunt aren't going to be over. Like, tell your mom we're not going to be... It's like, no, like, and you know how much that hurts Joe, too, because it's like, because even his therapist is like, oh, why'd you become a cop? It's like, yeah, because my uncle kind of pretty much took me at gunpoint to do it. But also, like, his uncle raised him to do what was right. It's like, as his, you know, because Frank always filled that role as a cop. Because for Joe, he always did this, too, because it's like, after me becoming a cop, it seemed like it kept his dad, kept his uncle Frank focused. Because I think a big part of this episode is kind of giving everyone something to do, like, to kind of... You know, he was that was his way of processing guilt, it like in his grief because he still blames himself over be, not being there. It's like the one that should have died in 9 11, he feels like it should have been him. But because Joe wanted to go to that battle to the bands, his dad ended up giving Frank the ticket, so they went. And it's like, instead of I should have been the one there, and your dad should be the one still alive here with you. So we we have that conversation again in other realities, but it's, it's just so sad that for, I mean, to be fair, like Frank. I think on some level, he knows what Joe did was the right thing to do, but it's just, he's just so caught up in, like, because he's drowning in his own grief again, because now, because he feels like, oh, I've, like, I've, I've failed in some shape or form, it's like, the fact is that Joe did what he did means you succeeded, you, you're like, you made him into the man that his dad would be proud of, and maybe on some level, because he feels like, I fell short of the man I should have been, maybe that's what kind of, is what's really at the heart of it, because I think that kind of bleeds over into the nursery alley, but we'll get there soon enough, but like I said, Amy's getting, like, bashed online like her how uh she was doxxed like people like broke into her place smashed it up she's considered a home wrecker uh bobby's wife is saying these are allegations this is about a woman scorned and stuff like that so it's like but what about all the other evidence not just you know but that's the thing of like it'll probably be like just because my husband had this affair this is just some woman fabricated it's like there's other people involved in it's not just amy but i guess the argument could be like oh but it's like right like because you don't want to believe the worst in your husband, but also it's like you don't want that backlash on your family because any stain against him will stain your entire family. So there's an element of that. But Amy's getting it from Regina in two different realities, like kind of like the rough end of things, but we'll get to that soon enough. Um, but what Joe learned from his therapist was kind of like you need a hard reset. Like forget about kind of today and just kind of start fresh with tomorrow. And he does get to return to active duty now. And so he not only suggests a reset for himself, but also for Amy, you know, because it's like for her, it's like, yeah, like we're only connected because of Bobby. It's like, yeah, they met because um, she obviously when she was working for Bobby and obviously him being quote unquote Bobby's hero. So that's how they met. But now it's like he wants to do the reset and just like I wish I actually thought was an adorable thing because I actually did that with a, a, a significant other in the past like we did that like one night we were on the phone I was like oh like let's pretend like we're meeting for the first time again I, I don't know it just it kind of made me a little nostalgic because like oh yeah I've, I've I actually done that before uh, it's a really interesting situation it's a weird thing to say but it's like yeah if you're if you're in a relationship try and just see how it feels it was just this was like part way into a relationship with a significant other and i did it i forgot what sparked it and we did it and i was like oh it was actually kind of interesting so seeing that kind of on film i'm like oh yeah I, i've actually I actually did that and once again it was like to be fair it was like me as a teenager that did it but still i just i don't know it it, it sparked something in me of like i said that nostalgia um 
But obviously, we got a little insight into why Amy is the way she is, too. Like, kind of like the fighter, the reason why she's able to use her voice the way she is is because of her upbringing. Like, she sees an injustice. She wants to bring justice to light. But she also sees, like, the flaws in the system and stuff like that because, like, her experience or, like, her dad got two years in jail for a crime he didn't commit because he fit the description of someone who burned down, like, what was it, like, a Wendy's or something like that. But it's like, yeah, he was at a protest. And I'm sure on some level it's going to bother Amy, too, because... She wanted to go to the protest. Her mom was suggesting they go as a family. It's like, if I hadn't suggested, if I chose not to, like, things could have been different. Like, you know, she got, like, a month, like, of having to clean up and stuff like that. She got a record. It was expunged. But still, that negative encounter with cops made her kind of have her, because, like, her and uh, Joe are talking about their likes and dislikes. For one, she's not the biggest Billy Joel fan. She's like, yeah, when I met you back in, like, graduation, like, oh, like, piano man? Like, how old is this guy? You know? Uh, but she talks about not being too happy about cops, which even, you know, Joe, it's like, right. Like if he, if he was in that situation, he would obviously hold, handle it differently. But it's like, right. When she looks at like, yeah, my dad didn't do anything and he got, uh, two years in prison. Your uncle actually admitted to what he did and he's just getting like a paid leave, you know? And it's like, yeah, that's how warped the system can be flawed and, you know, in, in occasion. And so, for Joe, he's like, I'm not that kind of cop. And she's like, I know. It's just for him, it's like, he kind of dislikes certain aspects of being a detective of, like, right, I'm being hindered in, like, my first investigation and stuff like that. Like, like being a beat cop, he had the, 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 he was allowed to kind of, like, be, because as a detective, you're there after the fact. Like, something has to happen first. But, but, like, a beat cop, like, you can be there, like, you can set preventative measures. Like, the situation with Amy's dad, like, in his circumstances, as a beat cop, I would have been able to be able to kind of be like, yo, 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 this isn't what it is. Like, that could have completely changed that situation. So, like, for him, is like, being in a mix of things as a beat cop gives you certain, like, le like certain angles of, you're able to be there before something becomes something, whereas a detective, you only step in until after the fact. So... And Amy's like, oh, tell your captain you want to reassign. And he's like, oh, it's a demotion. And she's like, no, it's not really a demotion. It's just kind of like, um, she kind of like changed his perspective on it because it's just being like, right, a reset. He's like, right, I never would have really looked at it that way. But it's just like, right, being back to where he's more comfortable. So I'm curious, is he going to do that? Because also it's like, right, like the position he's in right now, all the guff he's getting from people, like it probably like it'd be a nice kind of away from all of that obviously amy's going to be staying for with him for a while you know until she feels safe so i thought that was kind of sweet in a nursing reality um he has uh amy and eric look after chris because with his uncle frank in his life and uncle frank comes in he's like oh wait what happened to you because he doesn't know about chris's situation it happened after he disappeared so he's been in and out of their their lives um dealing with his own circumstances apparently like because like amy's like you remember what he did at the wedding so apparently like uh he started a fight uh, apparently it was a bartender like hit him with a good right hook but also like he, he's like yeah after giving a hell of a speech uh, but obviously he's trying to connect with chris for a little bit but then he starts coughing up blood and so joe takes him in while like eric like i said eric and uh, amy look after chris and spending time with him, and Eric's like, wow, you're actually really good with kids, you know? And that changed the perspective on this, because she was able to handle, because it's like, right, like, why does he keep drinking even though he knows it's bad? It's like, yeah, grandma's uh, pretty loud when she's on the phone with her friends, and so he he's aware of, like, his, uh, unc like, uh, Uncle Frank's, like, um, addictions and stuff like that. But it's like, yeah, like, you with um, your Roblox games and stuff like that, it's like, you know, you'll get a, like, headache stared at the screen, but you do it again, but we were there to make you feel better, it's kind of like that, she, she kind of broke it down in a very, like, elegant way, without really kind of going too deep into a lot of, like, you know, the, that, you know, I think it was a very, like, elegant way of kind of going about the topic of, um, addiction, and, and kind of putting it in a worldview that he could understand, but, uh, Eric's like, yeah, like, I, I like how good you were with him. And it made her start thinking about kids. And it's like, wait, you, are you, are we on the same page here? And it's like, yeah, they want to adopt. And even they send in the paperwork at the end of the episode. So I thought that was pretty dope. Um, another lane in that world is, uh, dealing with the Uncle Frank situation that, um, Jenny's dad comes by and he's like, okay, like, you know, I can check him out. And it turns out he's in the process of liver failure. If he does not stop drinking, he will die. And he's actually, uh, Jenny's dad's, uh, Doug is suggesting like, oh, I'm, um, uh, 
I could get him into a rehab facility, but then like he's like, no, no thanks. And then Doug's like, wait, are you still holding it against me because of the whole Jenny thing? It's like, you know, because I was a dick to you 10 years ago. He's like, oh, I didn't realize you ever stopped being a dick. He's like, yep, sorry, that came in. He's like, no, 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 I like seeing you shoot from the hip because I... He's never really, like, I guess, he stood up to him, but, like, it's only been more recently. He probably just, like, took all, you know. But it's like, yeah, he's like, I realized what I did all those years ago. He's like, oh, once in a while, like, once, once it, like one day, I'm able to just be, like, there's at least one day out of the year that I'm able to not be a dick, a, a prick. And so, because he apologizes for the whole Ginny thing. He's like, right, I was just trying to look out for my daughter, but I do, like, I look at what you're doing now. All you're doing to help her live out her dream to become a lawyer like she's always wanted. And I have to be grateful for that, you know, doing that for her, making that sacrifice for her. So, let me do this for you. And even talking to Ginny about it later on, she's like, wow, that's, is that really my dad? And he's like, yeah. Because she's got her own struggles. Because, like, right, she's looking at her phone because Eric had, uh, no, it was uh, Ginny had, not Ginny, oh, God all over the place. Amy has sent a picture of uh, Chris playing Jenga with them. And uh, the teacher like tries to make an example out of her. It's like, that was, in my personal opinion, that was a dickish move on her part. Because I'm like, but it's like, it's a little, like, I get it. Uh, you're trying to like, but it's like making an example of someone being like, uh, phone's off, please. That's all you had to say. You didn't have to be a complete and utter asshole about it. She was just like, uh, maybe you want to tell us blah, blah, blah. Oh, she's like, I'm sorry. About it. It's like, no, 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 no. Apparently, you know. And then she stumbles and it's like, oh, is it this or that? And it's like, oh, you know, it's like, why do you have to be such a, and she's later on, it's like, I'm so sorry, but it's like, no, it's okay. She's like, I, I'm a mother and everything. It's like, oh, there's plenty of women doing this that are mothers who are still, she's like, no, I'm not making excuses. It's like, okay, cool. If you're not making excuses, then you'll be able to tell me what that is right now. And obviously for Jenny, it's like, women are supposed to help other women. And it's just kind of like, and she quotes someone, it's like, oh, the, uh, yeah, I went to school with so-and-so. Only one of us was uh, top of the class. I'm like, God, could you be more of a prick? You're such a snob, but it, you know, once again, like, hey, Doug can turn it around for being a tool to, like, you know, maybe, like, Jenny will, like, you know, what, because, like, for her, it's like, you know, Jenny's like, I'm not using an excuse, I'm gonna double down, I'm gonna be a good lawyer, and I'm gonna be a mother, it's like, cool, but it's like, rather than, like, supporting, like, she could have turned that into a moment of, like, now that's what I wanted here, be proud of you, and then, like, I'll be expecting a lot from you, miss, like, you know, Jenny, and, like, that... That's that's what I think you should have done. You should have flowered it. You should have like added flower to it rather than being like, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna dig this up, uh, like dig up this budding plant instead of flowering and rather than nurturing it. Is what I'm trying to say. I'm like that was just a unnecessary. You didn't have to be a dick about it. But you know maybe for her it is like it's it's a tough love thing of like yeah I'm being a dick to you, but it's like this world ain't gonna hold any punches just because you're like you know you need to be on top of your game because this is a cutthroat world. And and that could be the difference between your client getting off and your client going to jail. So, like, I get it, but it's just like, you know, it's like it's like I said, it's a tough love situation. I'm not one about necessarily tough love like, in that regard. So I'm like, but maybe in her way, that's her way of doing things. So, but you know, it's actually talking to Joe that made her go like, you know what? Yeah, because I love that. It's like, oh yeah, when so and so's what was it like Liam or someone's dad tried to like. um throw a coup when you were the head of the PTA for so many years. And she's like, he did try to do that, didn't he? You know, so I, I thought that was really uh, sweet. But um, Jenny's doubling down on her efforts to study and she's going to she's going to nail this. She's going to basically show like her teacher, her professor up. Uh, but Joe has a very candid conversation with his uncle about getting him into there, uh, the, the, um, into um, a rehab and initially, he's kind of fighting it a little bit. But obviously, Joe's talking about the fact is, I like you, he's like, oh, get off of it, Joe. What do you know? He's like, what do I know? I'm here. You notice that no one else. He's like, no one else would be here. Like, I'm the one spending my my day off where I could be with my son right now here for you. He's like, I've already buried my father. I don't want to have to bury you next to him. And for him, it's like what it comes down to. Frank, it's like I wasn't there. Like I, it, it, you know, like I was bringing up in the. Uh, Detective reality, it, it, it's guilt. He it talks about the guilt of like, he felt guilty about like, I feel like I failed you and I failed him because we made a promise if something happened to each other, like we'd be, be there for the other's family. And he's like, I wasn't there for you. And Joe's like, take it from me as someone like dad, would, uh, dad wouldn't have been there either if I had gone to that game. So, he, you know, he's dealing, he's had to process and deal with his own like guilt in the whole situation. So he's like, you have to forgive yourself, Uncle Frank. 
And so at the end of it all, like Frankie is considering, like, right, I am going to, because like for him, it's like he's like being, because I do, he wants to be in Christopher's life because he's like, when, like you, he looks so much like your dad. The fact is that he's like, um, sitting like talking to him about like Apollo. He's like, I remember, like, it made me, it took me back to being six years old with your dad and um, watching the moon landing and stuff like that, you know, on television. And so that's a motivation enough for him to keep. Um, going so moving over to the musician reality we have amy burying herself in work move like i think it's a combination of form the ptsd of the whole thing that happened to bobby but also it's like there's a complicated thing of like knowing like he also had the affair and everything too so joe wants to do everything he can to try and help her and eric's the one that's like right like do what you always do like you know be there to support her in whatever way he can but he doesn't really know how and her mom his mom talks about knitting and i thought it was like there's this um beautifulness to what she was saying that basically knitting was like her way of keeping his father alive because it's like as long as I kept knitting it it would almost be like I wouldn't have to like think about the fact is of like right that um he won't be home that he won't be able to wear it and he it, it made it so it felt like as long as I keep knitting it's like I, I can keep him alive a little bit longer like no, no no like he's gonna come home but like the moment you're done knitting it's like it makes it real that he's not coming back and she's like yeah like the scarf is like now like nine feet long but it's like she had to like how she handled it like there there is no like everyone the everyone processes grief in their own way like you know some people like keep to themselves and bottle up but it's also like right but when that time comes, like, Amy, like, she's doing, like, what she's doing isn't wrong either. It's just, like, there is no right and wrong when it comes to processing your grief. And so, it's, like, eventually she's going to break it. She's going to need her village. And so, Joe got, like, a, a we're able to, because our parents couldn't come out. But um, Joe was able to, like, get, like, a private jet or whatever, to, like, to get, bring them um, there. So, she had her rock, she had her foundation there for her. And her mom's even like, you didn't even tell me, like, things were so bad, like, how shaken you were. But it's just, like, she was just throwing herself into all of this, trying to process it. Because at a young age, during that whole police situation, she told her, her dad told her that there are moments, like, yes, it's beautiful to use your voice, but there are other moments you got to put your feelings in a box and lock them away. Like, that's the thing you have to do. And she, her mom's like, we shouldn't have taught you that. Because, like, we learned the hard way that putting your feelings in a box, it's not just your feelings you're locking away. You're locking all those who are important, who care about you, you lock them out as well. So kind of don't, you know, you don't need to do that. Uh, we do find it like obviously Eric found Bobby's watch, but it was in her room, so he's kind of piecing it together. And he's stuck between a rock and a hard place because like obviously like he looked like Joe is his best friend, Joe is his um his buddy, but also it's like this whole thing with Amy too. It's like um you're the woman in my my best you're like my best friend's like wife, and like you become a good friend of mine, like you know, so now he's torn between like, oh, like, what do I do with this information? Like, he's like, I hope everything works out with my friends. He's worried about it later on. Because she was like, like, because a Regina was initially turning down the position of Congresswoman, uh, it was getting passed to Amy. So, but, you know, Joe was like, right, she's just kind of stone faced. She wasn't excited. Like, she, you know, it's just, once again, it's just like she's burying herself in the work. Uh, focusing on like writing a eulogy for Bobby and doing all this and that, planning stuff out. And at uh, at the funeral, not really the funeral, but in the church and everything, she told a story and she holds up the watch. And the moment she does, you're like, you see the look on Regina's face. Like the story she's telling, either it was like either Regina didn't know or two, I was like, that's a story Bobby doesn't tell many people. But like what the significance of that uh, watch was to him. I even thought it was beautiful where she was like, yeah, it's oh, like we set our clocks back um, from daylight savings time. But I'm going to keep this as it is because I want it to be a representation of Bobby always ahead of time. Because she had talked about her position of like she had reached out to him, but he didn't hire her. But he created a role specifically for her. Um, so I, it was it was a beautiful thing, except uh, Regina was like. So how long were you sleeping with my husband? So she's kind of lording that over. And even later on, they talk and she's like, it was one time. And it's like, I get like Regina's grieving right now. So she was lashing out, but still it, it kind of sucks. It's like, she was like, for one, I'm taking this uh, Congresswoman position because she was, she only, she was initially taking, not taking it, but now she's taking it because I think for one, it's like, well, Bobby owes it to me because of this affair. Two, I'm doing it just to spite you so you don't get it. You don't deserve it. I'm taking it. 
you know, and it's two, it's like that watch, you, oh, you did such a beautiful service, but you didn't talk to me about it beforehand. Maybe I wanted, I wanted to give that to Bobby Jr. as a memento, but no, you had to do it for your beautiful, it's like, it's like, but that's the thing of like you speaking like you knew better, like what was like what I wanted. Like you didn't ask my wishes as his actual wife. You, but it's like, yeah, she tried to do something to honor Bobby, you know, because he was always there for her. He supported her at such a young point in her life. It's just like, but all that's going to be just like um, twisting of the knife for Regina. It's all that really is. So it kind of sucks that things kind of came down to that. But uh, continuing the conversation are hard resets or resets in general because obviously for um, it was a reset for uh, Frank, which even in this musician reality, we do see him flipping the coin and it's just like, oh, you know, it's like his uh, sober chip and um, sobriety chip. And he's like, oh, you know, you know, funerals and stuff like that. And, you know, um, Joe's like, yeah, I know. Um, but, uh, obviously he's like, he wanted this to be a reset for them. And it's like, right. No more secrets. Because if we, you know, he was like, I'm so caught up in everything that I, I just couldn't be there for you. He's like, I know I was, I was being selfish, but he just felt like they weren't in a good spot. But it's like, he just wants to, um, things to be good between them. It's like before things get bad. And so it's like, right. No more secrets. And she's like, I slept with Bobby when I thought you were having an affair with Jenny and you know, and I, I think in all honesty, true, because it's a complicated thing. Cause it's like, regardless of what secret he was keeping, she shouldn't have done what she did. But it's also like, it's, it's not a justification thing. I'm not trying to say like, oh, if he hadn't told, um, that life, he'd been honest about the old, uh, Chris thing, then maybe, um, this wouldn't have happened. Probably wouldn't have, but because she wouldn't have believed that. But also we see that like Bobby, like, I don't know, it's a complicated thing. Because interestingly enough, in this reality, it turns out Wayne died too. I don't remember if he died in the nursing reality. Um, but he definitely died in this reality. And uh, just like he did in the detective reality. So it's like, because even Amy's like, we'll never know the truth. So I'm assuming the truth is eventually going to come out in the musician reality. And I think, sadly, I think it's going to backlash on um, Regina in some shape or form with the whole being a congresswoman. Like, oh yeah, her husband was caught up in some like nasty stuff i think eventually that's going to come out so it's coming out it hasn't come out in the nursing reality because maybe he never did all that i mean he still got shot but maybe it was for different circumstances maybe it was the same thing hopefully he doesn't end up dead in that reality because that'd be depressing you know situation to be in uh but it's a thing of like i'm not saying um I, it just depends on how Joe handles it because she did admit the truth. She could have kept that secret, but you know, you were talking about honesty. So she wanted to be honest about it. And you know, there's also nothing you can do about it too, because it's, it hurts the most because it's like the person she slept with too was Bobby. He can't be pissed at Bobby because Bobby's gone Two, It's like, he had just talked about it at the funeral, the eulogy or whatever, like before he played the song of like, Oh yeah. Uh, well one that apparently that was the song for them wedding. So, ugh. uh, from, um, uh, Regina and Bobby's, but two, the fact is that, um, he was just complimenting about like, Oh, how Bobby was such a great friend to Amy. And it's like, yeah, I he was a great friend to me, but also like what he being there for Amy, what he did for her. And I'll be grateful for that. So it's like adds more salt to the wounds in that situation. So hopefully he can come to, hopefully they can work this out. You know, it's just, you know, it's just like, right, her and Eric in one reality, her and Joe being in a good space in one, and just them not, her not being in one. After, I mean, everything she's got to deal with, like the PTSD, the complicated thing with Regina, and the complicated thing with Joe, so... But at least it's out in the open. Like, there are currently no more secrets in that reality. There's still the whole Jenny and her son, uh, and their son situation in um, the police reality. He still doesn't know about that, so that's... It's still a, a bombshell that needs to got that needs to be dropped in that reality. But the other realities, all the truths are out there, except for Bobby's circumstances, which I'm thinking eventually will come out in a musician reality. But we'll see. It's gonna be interesting to see where all this takes us. I'm not sure if the next episode's the season finale or not. I think there's only nine episodes for the season. I could be wrong. I think I looked it up on IMDb and I kept seeing only nine episodes. So we'll see. But I, I think next week's the episode's the season finale, but we'll have to wait and see. But uh, really, that's all I want to talk about. Till the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, live life to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day and goodbye.